to introduce the two speakers today. Um, community service officer Stacy Austin has been with the Riverside County Sheriff's Department for 25 years, which is hard to believe because you look way too young to have been there for that long. And our second speaker is Jerry Crippen Richardson. Um, and again, I've known Jerry for a long time, but I, I won't dwell on that, Jerry. Uh, Jerry's the coordinator with the Riverside County Department of Public and Social Services, and she oversees a very valuable asset uh, called the CARE Team, curtailing abuse related to the elderly. So both of them are here today to talk to us about fraud and scams and how we can prevent those kinds of incidents um, in our daily life. And I think Officer Austin is going to go first. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having us this morning. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to speak with you about some very important subjects regarding identity theft and scams. We actually get quite a bit of calls regarding identity theft and scams in particular. Most of the scams are via telephone. Some of them are via text message and others are from emails that are sent out. So what we're encountering is uh, the suspects will call and they will come up with some type of um, scam as far as you owe money or somebody's in distress and they will try and get people worked up emotionally in order to get them to uh, respond and not really think. But um, one of the things that we try to do is encourage people just to not even answer if you have caller ID and you can recognize uh, a phone number coming in as a legitimate phone call, then you can answer that. But if you do not recognize it, if it comes back to some um, uh, area code that you're not familiar with, that could be an indication that it is a scam or a potential scam. And you can just opt not to answer that and let the answering machine take it if somebody wants to leave a message. Um, a lot of times when we encounter persons uh, who are being scammed, uh, folks are requesting, scammers are requesting money. And a lot of times they'll have a great reason why you need to send that money via gift card, which will never happen when whenever the IRS or anybody else has an issue with something that uh, regarding taxes or what have you, they will always send you something in the mail. They're not going to call you and request money and nobody's going to request money from an actual gift card. And one of the um, one of the resources that I always use and I have booklets and pamphlets and all kinds of information uh, from, from this particular government agency, it's called the Federal Trade Commission, and you can reach them at ftc.gov, that's F as in Frank, T as in Tom, C as in Charles.gov, and they have a ton of information. You can also go to their, um, their website, Identity Theft. Dot gov identity theft dot gov and that too is going to bring you into all of their um, identity theft information from how to prevent identity theft to recovery plans they have booklets that you can actually order hard copies of booklets or you can just go online and look at the information that they have you can report scams to them um, and notify them of potential uh, businesses that are trying to scam, things like that. So one of the most important things is I would never send any money to anyone um, in, unless I knew that I owed that person money or if it was a legitimate claim that came via the mail. 
And anytime you receive um, requests from somebody, you can just hang up on them and then actually look for the legitimate business. If there is a legitimate business, if they're claiming to be with the IRS, call the IRS and let them know you received uh, this information from somebody you think it's a scam. Let the IRS know what's going on. That way they can pursue that. Um, Jerry may have uh, more information on how the IRS is dealing with that. Um, I did not print out their um, flyer, but they are actively pursuing um, scams related to their organization. And always guard your credit cards. If you don't need your credit card that day, don't take it with you. If you have more than one credit card and you only plan on using one for a particular day as you go out, just take that one with you. Sometimes when you're um, putting your credit card in a device to, to read the chip, I what I do, if your credit card number is on top of the credit card, some are not, some are on the bottom, and so you don't have to worry so much about it. But if the number is on the top of the credit card when you put it in to read the chip, just cover that up with your hand or with a piece of paper. That way somebody behind you or around you cannot take a photograph of that. Um, it's e so easy to take pictures of credit cards with phones nowadays. So you want to always be a little bit cautious when you're doing that um, at a store or even a restaurant. Uh, I wanted to bring up another um, couple of things that we have with the Sheriff's Department. Um, we do have a new program called um, Special Needs Reunification Registry. And that is something, uh, it doesn't particularly have to do with identity theft, but it, it, it is um, something that I had mentioned to bring up today. And it's a registry where people can go onto our website, www.riversidesheriff.org, www.riversidesheriff.org. And you can register <clears throat> yourself or you can register a loved one who may be susceptible to wandering away uh, from, from a home, from your home, or another home caretaker. Um, and it's a database that allows uh, people to enter information into, and then it allows us to access that information if we have somebody that we encounter who has um, appears to be disoriented out, out and about, or if somebody is missing and we get the call, we can give that name and identif identifying information even if there isn't a name to our dispatch center and they will be able to access information as far as uh, emergency contacts and so forth. So that's a great resource for you. Um, our, our, our agency also has text 911. So you can, if you need to on your cell phone in the to field, you can type in 911 and just text your, um, your information, your emergency, and a 911 dispatcher will text you back. So those are just a couple of things I wanted to throw out there real quick. And um, if you have any questions regarding the, the, um, um, identity theft or any type of information that you require for scams, please feel free to contact me at 760-836-1697. Again, that's 760-836-1697. That is my desk phone. Thank you, Stacey. I also put links for everything that you mentioned um, in our chat section and um i'm sure pam will be including that in our next newsletter as well uh so they can um, get that information in multiple ways really easy to find thank you you're welcome
Does anybody have any questions on anything that um, Stacy was talking about? Um, one thing I mentioned, Stacy, that I, I'm sure you mentioned it, but you talk about the, you know, the IR scam IRS calls and everything. Um, when I get calls from my credit card company, um, are there questions I should be asking them, or should I just not call them back or not pick up the phone? Is that a similar situation? Well, when it comes to credit card. Uh, what I generally tell people to do is if you receive a phone call from somebody saying that you owe money on a credit card or it's a, it's a issue with the credit card and, oh, well, we can clear that up right now. We just need this information from you. What I do is I just hang up on them and then I call the number on the back of my credit card and I let them know, Hey, I just got a phone call. I think it's a scam. And can you tell me if there's any usage on my credit card that I need to be aware of any fraud or anything like that? And then they will tell you either, yes, uh, that was us and somebody used your credit card here or no, that was not us. We did not call. There's no problems on your credit card. Good, good, good advice. So what I always recommend is, uh, because there are so many scams, it's easier just to just to hang up. And then if they said they were from a particular company or agency that you're, you can look up and get a real phone number for, I would just call them directly, just hang up and call the source and find out um, if they did in fact try to contact you. I, I just wanted to say, this is Betty. I had a similar experience, maybe you mentioned it already, with Amazon calling and offering um, Amazon Prime for $49.95. So be very careful because when that happened, I called Amazon and they said, of course not. That's a, that's a scam. Somebody's trying to sell you um, Amazon because it costs $99 or $100 or whatever it is. So watch out for that one too. Right, because they may be trying to just get your credit card number or your credit card information to charge you. Exactly. Um, so be very careful. I, I generally would not um, even converse with the people. Once you, if you answer the phone and they say, and they start saying you owe or I'm from and you don't recognize it and you're not expecting that, just hang up. Don't even converse with these people because um, they they will just try and confuse you and get you emotionally upset and it, it'll just spiral out of control from there. So just uh, don't even give them the opportunity. Then there's the grandchild scam. I'm sure most everybody's had that once, twice, three times. Right. That's that we we used to get that quite a bit. I think Jerry's probably going to talk about that as well. We used to get that quite a bit. I haven't seen that too much lately, um, but that is all about getting you emotionally worked up. They usually I always tell people if somebody's talking really fast and saying things that, uh, you know, are trying to get somebody upset or uh, worked up, then just hang up, just hang up because you don't even want to converse with that person. It's likely a scam. And again, you just go to the source. If it, they're saying they're from a credit card company or if they're saying uh, it's grandparent, uh, grandchild type of situation, just call your relative, just call them, just say, Hey, I got this phone call. So I would always just hang up and call whoever it is that they're claiming to be, or if it's a family member type situation, whoever they're claiming is in distress or in trouble. Uh, well, thank you. And it, since you mentioned um, Jerry bringing up something as part of her presentation, um, I think I'll pass the pass the mic over uh, to Jerry. Okay. 
<clears throat> Thank you for having me. Um, do you want to go? I think we have time to go ahead and put that um, PowerPoint up. <clears throat> and I'm going to sure. go over. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, no, nope, I don't have COVID. I'm good. <laughs> um, just a little dry throat. Um, so I have quite a few of the topics in my pr presentation that, we, that were discussed and then um, a couple little videos. And those videos were provided by the FTC. Uh, I think they're cute, but very informative. And they're only about a minute or two long. So um, we're going to go ahead and go into the presentation. Uh, again, my name is Jerry Crippen Richardson. I'm with Riverside County Department of Public and Social Services. We call it DPSS. And my unit is called the CARE Program. Uh, I'm not with the um, Edison Company. I can't get you a cheaper rate. Uh, they have their CARE Program. Ours is for curtailing abuse related to the elderly. And uh, uh, CARE has been around. We're specific to Riverside County. And we've been around approximately since 1997. Uh, I joined in 1998. And uh, it's a great program that serves the same population as um, Adult Protective Services, seniors 65 and older, and dependent adults. Um, so I'll just prompt you if that's OK. Yes. Next slide. So we're here today to talk about scams targeting seniors in the area. And um, my PowerPoint's mainly target is about what's going on with us in the Coachella Valley. Next slide. So uh, some of the types of scams that we see are, again, the IRS scams, uh, Medi-Cal scams, um, you know, healthcare scams, computer scams, sweetheart scams are big. Their grandma, it's me scam, lottery scams. And a lot of them are using money wiring scams and um, we call it money mule scams. So we'll talk a little bit more about that next. Um, just because we have so much going on with COVID, uh, I did dive into the FTC's information and they, they um, have this slide is basically um, talks about COVID scams that are happening. Uh, I haven't received any out here in the Coachella Valley, but you always, with any scam, you wanna do your due diligence, you wanna um, verify, and you just wanna pay good attention to uh, what they're asking for. So if somebody um, is offering a vaccination for a fee, we know that that's, that's a problem. If they can, can, can get you up on the list, that's a problem for a fee. So that, the common thing is if they're asking for a fee or if they're asking for your personal information. You want to go to our through our normal um, vaccination websites that we have here in the Coachella Valley and they're right there on your screen. And your, your vaccination is always free. They'll ask for your, your um, medical card when you get there. That's about it. So next slide. Uh, with the Medi-Cal or Medicare benefits scams, that's usually where people are trying to steal your information so that they can sell it for somebody else to use your insurance. So you want to be very, uh, they recently, you know, changed it so you don't have your um, social security number on your medical benefits card, but you still want to carry or keep that guarded, not give that information out to anybody because um, if somebody gets a hold of your medical information, your medical ID um, insurance information, they can use that to get their own benefits. And then when you need them, they're not available to you. So you want to be very careful about that and not give it out to anybody that you did not verify they are who they say they are. Next slide. And that'll be the common theme with most of this. Um, with healthcare questions or concerns, there's an amazing uh, agency called HICAP, and that's Health Insurance uh, Counseling and Advocacy Program. They are not um, biased to any specific program. They're counselors that basically you tell them, I have this medication, I go see this doctor, which program will work best for me? And you just kind of lay everything out with them and they help you figure out which one's gonna work the best, 
cover the most for your specific needs and they're not going to have any biases to one company over another. They don't make anything off of it. They're just really good um, volunteers that are amazing at, at understanding all that information <laughs> and retaining it all. And so that's their, um, their information there that you can always make an appointment with them. Next slide. And then they, they know about all the different scams that are going on with that have to do with um, healthcare. So you can always ask them if you have something, somebody approached you about something and you have questions, call them. So this is our first um, little, little uh, snippet of a information or a, a video. And I just, you wanna go ahead and start it if it, hopefully it works. Uh, let's see, okay. And this is basically um, social security scams. I'm not sure, Cherry. Is there a link in here to? It, there's usually a little button on it that um, just has the arrow. So maybe it's not working, but basically it's where the video shows somebody who's gotten a call saying that there was social security and that um, they asked for all of their information and then they used that later and caused them all kinds of problems. So you, it, if you get a, a call from Social Security, it's not Social Security. The only time they ever call anybody is once you've reached 100 years old, they are um, supposed to verify that you're still around. Um, so if you're 99 and a half and you got a call, nope, not them. So just keep that in mind when if anybody calls and says that they're from Social Security and they're asking for information. And again, with the, like Stacy said, the common theme is verify if somebody calls and says there was so and so hang up don't call the number that was prompted on the voicemail or on your email you call the number that you have for that specific agency if it's on your card or whatnot that's how you want to verify so you can go to the next slide Again, with um, Social Security, uh, fraudulent calls are being made. A lot of times they're asking for um, money uh, for your account numbers. And the common theme is if anybody's asking you for gift cards, mm -hmm. you're 100%, you're unless it's your grandkid. <laughs> they're the only ones that should be asking you for gift cards and at, still. Um, don't you don't pay anything you don't pay your social security or pay back social security that was overpaid to you uh you don't pay your taxes you don't pay anything with gift cards apple tune cards things like that um verify hang up go to the regular website call the regular number with covid the social security office in in um palm springs is closed but you can leave a message and they have people um teleworking from home and returning those calls. So just call and verify. But again, they're calling, they're tr trying to scare you into giving you up your information and your money. Next slide. With the IRS scams, we were talking about that. Um, if you can scroll down a little bit to the bottom, this is where somebody's calling saying that they're with the IRS, that your, your payments was wrong or you didn't file or you did file. There's some sort of scenario that puts you in a state of panic. Um, because they're posing as IRS agents. Sorry. The, the, so I'm um, sorry. That's all right. Okay. They're, they have a specific task force called TIGTA. It's Treasury. It's in the slide there. Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration. Um, you can call the IRS and there's a website that you can go to and they're actively working these cases. If uh, somebody called you, said they're with the IRS and tricked you into giving them some money or gift cards or anything like that, they are working those cases because they've, they're, they've made a, um, they broke the law, a federal law, and they have a whole task force that's going after them. So you want to go ahead and report that they are working those cases. Um, and again, the IRS is not going to ask you to, you know, pay anything, uh, over the phone. 
number one, they're going to send you something in the mail and they're going to you know, work it out with you. It's a long process. It's not something that you have to do immediately or it's going to be worse or we're going to issue a warrant for your arrest, that kind of thing. Terry, I have a question. Um, yes. I've, I've gotten these kind of calls and on my phone, you know, it shows a uh, caller ID or whatever. Um, so how can I, what kind of information, if I, if I needed to contact the inspector general, what kind of information do they need? Should I take that phone number that's on my... No, no, you don't want to take the number that's on your caller ID because there are these programs that, that the scammers are using that sh can show even the Palm Desert Sheriff Station, we had one that um, showed that number because they have a fake number put up for it. Right. So it looks like it's coming from maybe, you know, Palm Desert Sheriff Station or the IRS, and they'll even do the research to get the, the one that they see on the website for the IRS. You want to hang up and um, call the IRS separately, not, not using the information that you see on caller ID. Um, this number here on the, on the um, PowerPoint is the legitimate number. Um, but if they have a link on a computer, don't use that. If they have a number that's on the, um, the outgoing message or the incoming message, don't use that. You want to you know, get a separate no number. Call the sheriff's station. Call CARE. We'll get you the proper number. So Okay. okay. So just, Thank you. Be very careful about that. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Next slide. And again, the IRS, Social Security, none of these agencies are going to ask you to go buy gift cards. Nobody needs to be paid with gift cards. Um, say no, hang up. And the more you talk to these people, trying to trick them or anything like that, the more they think that they're going to be able to get money out of you. So it's not even worth it to, to try to talk to them. Just hang up and don't respond to them at all. Next slide. Um, if you are a victim of some sort of fraud, scam, whatnot that happened via the internet, uh, the IRS has a task force um, that they also have a, um, a database that only law enforcement can get the information out of, but the public can put their information in. So if say you were a victim of a scam that happened via the internet, you go to the, this www.ic3, which means internet crime. I don't know why it has a three in it, but <laughs> uh, .gov. And that's the FBI's data warehouse where we all of the victims put in their information. Law enforcement, FBI can use that information with a filtering system. And so maybe you had one case where the information is similar to another one. They use the, the filters and, the, and whatnot to put those cases together. And then um, more often than not, they're able to put those cases together and find these people, if, especially if they're still in the United States. A lot of these cases happen outside of the United States, but the FBI, depending on where it is, they may have some jurisdiction. But all the better to um, put that information in there so that it can be worked. Local law enforcement doesn't have a lot of jurisdiction outside of the area. You do want to make your local um, police report because if anything comes back where you've had an identity theft on top of it and things like that, you can show that you did your due diligence and that you made the proper reports. But you also want to absolutely um, file your report with the IC3. Next kit, or Next slide. So family member in distress, we called it the grandma scam. Um, it's kind of evolved into where it could be an aunt, an uncle, a friend that maybe you have a group, like a travel group. I know we've had um, cases where, or um, groups from college where people have gotten these, um, a hold of someone's email and they'll use that to track these people down and then use the same kind of scam lawyer. It's, it's me, I'm in trouble, is this, you know, this common scenario, whether it's I was caught poaching in Canada, I was in a hit and run, or I'm, I've been traveling abroad and, and everything was stolen and I need help. Please go get 
gift cards, please wire money to, please do this. So um, again, like Stacy said, verify, hang up on them, call that person that they're posing as and verify that they are who they say they are more often than not, you know, they're, it's not them. And you just, you want to hang up and report it. So again, gift cards, don't, don't, uh, with somebody asking you for gift cards, that's, that's a red flag right there. And um, with family members, we've talked to people about having a, um, ask a specific question that to somebody that may have been able to go on your, um, your Facebook and see that you have a grandchild named Billy or whatever, but Billy would know that what your wife's name is or your husband's name is, but this person may not, you know, something to that effect or what their parents' name is. Have a, have a kind of a, some questions that you want to ask, but it's easier just to hang up and call their parents anyway, or whoever it is. So be very careful of that. Next slide. Sweepstakes slides or sweepstakes scams. That used to be the big one. It's still around, um, but uh, basically people are posing as Publishers Clearinghouse or some other similar sounding um, sweepstakes and saying that you've won something and that you know this car is coming and you need to pay the taxes or the storage fees or something like that. Do your due diligence. If you didn't enter sweepstakes, number one, if you didn't go to Canada and enter a sweepstakes, if you haven't been to China and you didn't enter sweepstakes, you didn't enter sweepstakes. It's illegal to enter a foreign lottery when you are within the United States. So if you didn't travel to that country, number one, that's a red flag because you can't enter a sweepstakes. Um, if you didn't enter Publishers Clearinghouse, if Publishers Clearinghouse contacts you that you won, it only happens like they see on TV. If you don't have balloons and somebody standing there with a big check, you didn't win. They never give you a heads up so that you look all pretty and everything and let you know ahead of time. They actually come to your door. So publisher, this happens so much with Publishers Clearinghouse that you can go to their website and they'll, they have all the information about how these scams work. But basically, if you didn't enter a lottery, you don't have a ticket in front of you, you didn't win, and if somebody's asking you for more money before you get your prize, that's the red flag. So um, don't give anybody your personal information, your bank account information, um, attorney fees, taxes, blah, blah, blah. Don't, just don't do it. Um, you can always call, again, the Sheriff Station Care Program if you want us to check something out, please do. Next slide. Jury duty scam, it's an oldie but a goodie. And that's where somebody will call you or um, and let you know that you missed jury duty and we've issued a warrant for your arrest. That's how they get you in that panic state. And then they ask to verify your information. They want your social security number or they, they want you to pay a fee so that you won't be arrested because they're coming to get you. And they'll ask you for your bank account information or for you to wire money. Don't do it or gift cards. Um, if you miss jury duty, you can always go down to the, um, the jury room and tell them I missed jury duty and they will sign you back up, no problem. They are not gonna come out and arrest you. And you know the courts have been closed quite a bit. So there's not a lot of jury duty going on anyway. So, but you can always call down to the Indio or the Palm Springs um, courthouses and ask if you've missed jury duty. And, but they're not gonna call you anyway. They always send you something in the mail. Next slide. So um, the, with the viruses and the, you know, the pop-up messages, we have a lot of tech scams where you get some sort of message popped up on your computer that, you know, your, your, your computer may even go black. And it says warning, and then you're supposed to call this number or click on this link. Has anybody had any of these happen? Yep. Uh, don't do it. Uh, close your computer down, walk away for a good 10 minutes bring it back up. If it's still there, go to Geek Squad or a computer company, you know, uh, uh, a co or Apple or wherever that they can professionally clean your computer out. But more often than not, if you don't hit the link, if you don't respond, it'll just go away because they're moving on to somebody else. 
Next slide. Okay, it doesn't look like this is gonna work either, but this is gentlemen, because um, it doesn't have that little arrow on it. No. Uh, this gentleman talks about, he was a victim of a tech support scam. And basically it was the same scenario. He clicked on it. He was um, uh, told that he had a virus. They wound up getting into his bank accounts and things like that. And it was, it was scary. Um, he did go and get his, it cleaned out and um, changed all of his passwords, whatnot, and reported it. So you, you want to do that. You want to report it if you are a, a victim and you did lose some money. Next slide. And contact your bank and law enforcement right away. With identity theft, um, like Stacy was talking about, the, the FTC has some really good information on how to clean up identity theft. If you've been a victim of identity theft, that's where somebody obtains your personal information, poses as you to get, to use it to their benefit. Um, you know, this can affect you when you need to get a home loan, a car loan, um, you know, a credit card, it, besides the fact that people are gonna be coming after you for whatever debt that this other person who used your identity to, um, to purchase other things and then, then you're on the hook for it. Uh, the FTC has this great booklet where it has template letters where you can, um, so you can copy the template letter, send it off to the different credit bureaus that have um, uh, contacted you about this, the different agencies that, that so-called um, debts are owed to, and you can help clean that mess up. It is lengthy. It takes a long time, but you don't, you can't ignore it. You have to take care of it because it will affect you later on. Um, maybe not right that minute, but it will affect you. So the way that these people are committing the identity theft, they're stealing your purses, your wallets, they're dumpster diving to get your personal information. So um, how many people use shredders? Okay. Yeah. You want to shred any of your um, documents, any mail that has your personal information, you want any magazine subscriptions that have, you know, your address on it, your account number maybe is highlighted in there. It doesn't look like anything to you, but it could be something that they, they could use to order stuff off of that magazine. Um, your your uh, sub, uh, prescription bottles have your information on there. Tear those off or black them out really good before you throw those bottles away. Um, your receipts, shred those. You don't just leave them laying around, you know, uh, people can use that to commit identity theft. You just want to be very, very careful. And when you do uh, use a shredder, if you can, get the kind that makes it like confetti instead of the ribbons, because sometimes these um, dumpster divers will go through and they can still make out account information. So if you have the kind that does it with a ribbon, tear it up first and then shred that that way. And online, a lot of times they're using um, Facebook, things like that to get some of your information and then go from there. So be careful about what you share on social media. Um, you know, don't, don't put too much out there. Don't put that you're gonna be out of the area, you're gonna be on vacation, the house is gonna be empty, that kind of stuff. Or all of your grandkids, first and last names or your, your children's first and last names, things like that. Uh, next slide. Um, Jay, real quick, I think one of our members has their hand up. I just want to check real quick. Um, Jim Ebsery, did you have a question for Jerry? Yes, I do. Uh, the question is this. Uh, what can we, what kind of uh, legitimate questions can, will be called by any of the government facilities. Well, the, yeah, the government agencies, like, they are going to ask you for your social security number. They are going to ask you for personal information because they have to verify you are who you say you are. The trick is make sure that that's who you're speaking with. Right. So um, with okay. COVID, it's a little harder. You can't just go down to the social security office and talk to them. Um, but you want to make sure that you have the, the legitimate phone number or website. Um, and 
the way you do that is, you know, you can call us, you can um, use it off of any paperwork that you've had in the past that you know came from them, any uh, past correspondence. Um, geez. Um, yeah, they are going to ask all that per pertinent information. So you, you just have to be do really sure that they are who they say they are. So don't react to any cold calls that you get. You initiate that call with the number that you have. And that's kind of the best way I, I can think of to um, be sure. So you have to ask them to identify themselves and then you check well, out, is it? Um, yeah, but they can, I, you know, they can give you a fake number and you don't know how to verify that. So I, I would also say that um, they yeah. likely will not even call you. Uh, they would send you something in the mail, like Jerry was saying earlier. So the IRS and most government agencies, they're not even going to call you. The courts will not call you. Um, the jury scam thing, the courts will not call you. The IRS will not call you. The only thing I could think of is maybe your bank might call you, but you can always hang up and call your bank. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah you can call the number on the back of your card. So you know, you, you want to be the one initiating the call. So if some, if say somebody says they called you from Social Security, don't call the number that they, they left you. You go to the local Social Security number, like I put it up yeah. there, but right. And you 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 call, you initiate the calls with the legitimate number. Right. Okay, good. Sorry good. for the phone interruption, but we get a lot and it says spam risk, which we don't answer. But who who is that spam risk? I mean um you may have a a, a spam risk uh, app on your phone. Did right. you put one on your phone? Because I have one so that it says potential scam when um, basically when robo calls are yes. coming. So that's good to have, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And okay. I screen my calls unless it's, you know, my daughter's number that's already in my phone or, you know, I let people leave a message and it, then I listen to that. And if I think it's legitimate, then I'll call them back. But more often than not, scam, spam calls or scam calls, they're not gonna leave you um, a message. They'll just keep calling you. But if they do leave you a message um, and it sounds like it's some horrendous thing going on, you can always call us and see if we can um, verify anything for you. Okay, uh, next slide. With, again, with ID theft, uh, never throw away your receipts, uh, your bank statements, shred them first, and reconcile your bank activity every month. If there is something on your bank account, you know, uh, somebody snuck into your bank account with a fake charge, uh, and you report it within 30 days, more often than not, the bank is going to take that off. But if you wait after 90 days for sure, before you notice it, uh, the bank um will will hold you accountable because there's a time frame that you're supposed to report things to them for them to write it off basically so you want to really go over your bank statements every month um if you still get them in paper form if you do it online you can check your bank statement every day every hour and um make sure that everything is is actually yours so just be be diligent in checking out your your um, finances Next slide. And decrease your risk again, shred sensitive papers, d discard catalogs, like some people like to uh, donate their catalogs and whatnot, just tear off that part of the back of the catalog that has your information on it with your address and everything. Guard your social security number. Don't carry your social security card with you, please, because if somebody gets a hold of your wallet or your um, that's like Christmas to an identity theft person, um, to have the actual card, they can, they can get, um, loans, they can get employment, they can get citizenship with that. So just be very careful. 
Uh, carry only the credit cards you need that day, like Stacy said. Um, again, if something happens, that's less mess you have to clean up. Use a different password other than your mother's maiden name for your credit cards because unfortunately a lot of family members have been the ones that have done the identity theft on people. You may have you know, niece or nephew or whatever that even could be their boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever. Um, use something else that you'll remember, but don't use your mother's maiden name because that's a lot of people know that. So next slide. Um, if you are a victim of identity theft, you want to contact your bank immediately to have the bogus charges removed. You want to put a fraud alert. How many people get their free um, uh, credit report every, every uh, year? Okay, so we have um, the government requires the three credit agencies to give you a free credit report every year. Um, and they genuinely have about the same information on each of them. So I like to stagger it like the first time you do TransUnion, wait four months, do Equifax, wait four months, do the last one. You can monitor your credit report more often than, than um, once a year that way. And you can also um, either go online and print it out right there in your home, or you can call the number um, that's that for the credit report and they'll ask you all those questions that uh, I tell you never to give, <laughs> but they have to verify you are you, who you say you are before they give that, other, that information. So they're gonna ask not only your social security number, but they're gonna ask questions like, have you had a mortgage with any of these companies in the last 10 years or obscure things like that, that only you would know. So um, be prepared for that, but again, if you're going to the right website or the right phone number and you know that this is the true one, you, you can give that information. Um, and then you, if you're cleaning that up, you want to put a, a freeze on your credit. You want to um, notify law enforcement, get a proper police report and close the fraudulent accounts that were affected by this theft. Next slide. Uh, sweetheart scams. With COVID, we've had a lot more than we normally do because people are using the internet and and whatnot to you know connect with people. So um, uh, this is basically where you just meet somebody. Um, this slide is about meeting somebody in person, but where somebody comes into your life or you're a friend of yours and um, offers, offers maybe to be uh, a caregiver or whatnot, then all of a sudden there's a uh, family member in distress, they need money or a relationship happens between the two and they're off to Vegas. And maybe your friend who met this new person is giving them money. You wanna report that to us just so we can go and make sure that it's indeed what it's supposed to be, or if it is a, a true sweetheart scam, adult protective services, law enforcement, we'll respond to that. We'll go out, make sure that the person is able to make the, the right decisions and that they're not being um, financially abused. Um, again, with adult protective services, we have to have that person's permission to work their case. It's not like CPS where we can see a, a crime happening and remove a child from a home. We, APS cannot do that. Um, we go out, we have to ask permission to speak with that person. And then we do conduct an, an investigation and see if we can help in any way and, and offer our services. So um, if you see somebody that has a new person in their life and you think maybe it might be a scam, let us know and we'll go out and do that investigation. But more often than not, if they're asking for money right away, that's, or at all, that, that's the red flag right there. Next slide. Um, I had this cute video. So if you go on the FTC website, these videos are on there, but it's basically, this talks about an online romance scams where, you know, you think you're talking to one person, this nice gentleman and, or lady, and it's actually somebody else and it's a, it's a crook trying to get your information. So uh, next slide. 
So with the internet, oh, these relationship uh, scams happen. Sorry, I'm gonna move this over here. Uh, where somebody basically claims to, a lot of times, the ones that we're getting, and I've even seen this on like Dr. Phil, um, somebody is posing to be either in the military a lot of times, I guess we like somebody in uniform, and they're making all these excuses why they can't Zoom or speak to them in person, but they always have some sort of issue where they need some emergency money, but they have tons of money, but it's in a different area. Um, and they develop a relationship with somebody that they've never seen, and then they start to send them money. And some cases, they become money mules. And what that term is, is where they're used in a variety of scams that are using different people. So maybe they have them send money to this other person that's supposedly going to get them the, um, the sweetheart their money, or the sweetheart is sending money, but it's in somebody else's name to a bank account that they have the person set up. Um, it's kind of complicated, but basically they're used as money mules to clean money and then filter it back to this person who supposedly is, you know, more often than not a U.S. citizen that's trapped in some other country and can't utilize, get into their own funds that they have. So if, again, if you have uh, a relationship with somebody that has a new person in their life, but, and they're quite smitten with, but they're uh, going to the bank a lot and they never seem to be able to see this person via Zoom or one other platform like this and they've never really met them but they're sending them money report it to us we want to see if we can go out and help um, and also a lot of red flags would be grammar, grammar issues um, misspelling um, just everything looks a little wonky on the emails and whatnot so um, and asking for money. So you want to just report that to us and we'll, we'll get somebody out there to talk to them. Next slide. So basically, again, we, we love the FTC websites. They are a plethora of information, but they have the 10 things that you can do to avoid being a victim of fraud. Number one, spot an imposter. Um, scammers are pretending to be somebody that you trust. Uh, do online searches. When you search a company, like if you want to do business with a company, search the company's name and put scam or fraud behind that name when you put it in a search engine. And then all of these things, if they have those things, will pop up. Um, don't believe your caller ID, like we talked about, um, because they can put in fake numbers on the caller ID. Uh, don't pay up front for a promise. I promise you have a BMW in storage. I promise you have millions of dollars coming. Don't pay for that. Next slide. Uh, and consider how you pay. If you pay for something with a credit card, you're, you're a little more protected than if you pay with your um, ATM card because then they have access to all of your money. So just be wary of that. Um, and talk to somebody you trust before making a decision of giving your personal information away or some money. You know, run it by your friends and your family or somebody you trust. Hang up on robocalls. Don't, don't even answer robocalls, please. Be skeptical about free trial offers. A lot of times, you know, nothing's free. Um, if there's a trial offer, uh, there may be a lot of uh, attachments to that where you have to cancel it that day a specific way, but you didn't realize that. And then it's been three months and now you've been charged a bunch of fees. So be, be read the red, uh, the, the small print. Don't deposit a check or wire money back. We have a lot of these new scams that are happening where um, it's Zelle or um, Venmo or one of these um, companies where you can transfer money to a friend or even Amazon, Amazon, you know, Amazon's a big one where they notify you that you've either paid too much or you're due a reimbursement. So they get into your computer 
or they have you send, um, get a gift card. And basically they're trying to get more money out of you. They say you have your Amazon account has um, been overcharged or you're doing reimbursement. So they want to get into your um, Amazon account and then they take money out of your savings and put it into that account and it gets complicated, but Amazon's not gonna contact you to give you money back, trust me. <laughs> um, if you get something like that, where they're asking for money or they say they overpaid you, hang up, do your due diligence and check them out. And sign up for fraud alerts whenever possible. Um, FTC has a lot of them. AARP has a lot of great information. Um, educate yourself on things that are happening. So next slide. So to get your free credit report, this is the actual number, uh, the phone number. And then uh, the, the, there's the website that the law enforcement requires them, or I'm sorry, the government requires the, the agencies to provide to you to get your free credit report. And I've given this uh, PowerPoint, so you guys will all have that. Next slide. So any other questions? I know I ran a little long, I'm, I apologize. It was great information, so. Okay, good. That's okay. All right, well, thank you all. Um, thank you, Jerry. Um, <laughs> Pat, you know, one thing I was, go ahead, Pam. I just wanna say I had a friend uh, several years ago that succumbed to the grandma scam and it was just heartbreaking. And, um, she, you know, she, answer the phone and said, oh, grandma, this is so-and-so. Grandma, this is your grandson. She said, oh, is this? And gave the name. And mm -hmm. she said, yeah, that, yeah, this is George, whatever. And she went ahead and um, sent a money via a wire. And this woman didn't have very much money to start with, but she, she was scammed out of $1,000. And when she realized it was just heartbreaking. So, yeah. yeah. And so, these so. people do not care if you live on straight social security, if you have millions of dollars, they'll try to get every dime out of you. I even had a lady that they told to go get a loan. So she not only gave all of her own money, she applied for a loan and then was on the hook for that too, that, and the money that she sent away. Wow. People have taken seconds out on their homes to pay for these fees or whatever, because they thought that they um, either needed to save somebody or that they won some money. So just, yeah, report, 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 please. Thank you. Go ahead, Dom. Do either one of you know how, um, like I was at the beach one day and I was not using this particular credit card, but um, all of a sudden I was getting alerts that it had been uh, used and they had gotten something like $1,500 or something out of it. And I did, all I was doing, it was just in my pocket. I had not even used it yet. So do you, either of you know, other than just um, not bringing only, you know, just the card that you're using with you, is there any protection that you can use that stops them from, you know, getting your, your card without even using it? Well, there's, um, if, if, if they use one of those little scanners, sometimes they can use those scanners. You can get an RID protection thing that, that um, keeps the, um, the, the I, don't, I don't know the technical terms, but there's an RID protection thing, like we have them for women's um, purses now. It's a little sleeve that you can put your credit card in so that nobody can read it through it. Oh. That, that helps um, having an alert on your credit card. So every time you use it, they call you to verify, which is kind of a pain, but it's useful. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there, there's just, the alerts are the best. Yeah. I, I've had that happen where I'm like, I left my phone in my, in my, uh, car. I went in to buy something that was over a hundred dollars. And I'm like, why is it telling me I can't buy it? You know, I have plenty of money, but that's what it was is because they were trying to alert me and. I didn't answer the phone and and um, verified it was me, so it didn't go through. Yeah, and that's really the best one, Stacy. What do you think? 
Uh, yeah, those are those are the best options there. Um, also, be careful where you use your credit card. And um, if you can pay cash, that's probably the best when you go to the gas station. Sometimes they'll put fishing devices into the gas uh, pump card readers. And uh, sometimes at ATMs, I went to an ATM not that long ago at the bank and somebody had pride where the card reader is. And I just opted not to use that when I went to a different ATM. So uh, being kind of watchful of uh, where you're putting the card and uh, who might be around when you're using the card. If you can use cash again, that's a good option. But, but is there some kind of a device that uh, hackers have that can get your information off of the chip without you even using the card? I'm not sure about the chip. I know before they had the chip, there was, they could drive through a neighborhood or a lot of them would go to the gas stations and just kind of hang out. And as people were taking their cards out, they, they would do that. But I think the chip has helped with that. So I'm not sure I'm not up that um, much on the, the tech stuff. Um, it might be something I, I'll, you know what, I'll, I'll reach out and see if I can get some information on that. And if you um, want to give me a call in about a, a week, <laughs> sometimes it takes me a while, or send me an email, I, I'll get that information for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm also not aware of any chip readers other than the card readers that they can put into uh, card reading systems that yeah. will capture all that information. Uh, apart from that, I'm not aware of anything that they can do remotely. Okay, thank you. And I did put in the chat a link for um, Amazon uh, for those sleeves that Jerry was mentioning. They're called RFID That's protectors. It. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a little sleeve that you can put your credit card in so that you can't read it. but. Um, I think the chips were supposed to take care of that. So, but again, it's a pain, but having that alert every time you use it really does help. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, Pat, any um, comments? No, I, I'd just like to um, thank everyone for joining us and thank Jerry and Officer Austin for all the great information. We really appreciate your time and all the wonderful work that you do here in Riverside County. Thank you.